And so, the one thing that you can never do too much of is rake the wheels and only put about a second a piece out of this. The compound starts to gunk up. Okay. Okay, and a rake is just like it sounds. It's a metal rake that gets in there and loosens all that stuff back up so that you can continue using the wheel. You see how that's starting to glaze up? Right. Okay. So, this is raking. This is a rake. Got a rake? No, I need to order one of those apparently. <laughs> be, be careful with rakes. Okay. See what it's doing? So yeah. I typically will do this quite a bit throughout the course of a day if I'm spending the day here. Right. I may do it in between every razor. I may do it in between the same razor. It just depends. You saw that shiny glaze. Yeah. <clears throat> if I see that, I want it gone. That would be considered raking. Right? And so now, when I put this back on here, okay, see how easy that took? Right. Okay. And you don't, you don't want to let it get glazed up. I would, for my personal preference, I would just say rake, rake, rake. Okay. You know what we're starting with? Pretty tarnished razor. Okay. All right. So, some people even on the greaseless, do a lot of side to side. I don't do much of that. The majority of the work I do is is, is uh, okay. horizontal. Okay, I don't do much perpendicular. Okay, I hope I got that right. <laughs> but I do most of it lengthways. Parallel. Into there. Okay, and so basically what we want to do, when you're coming back, that's what they call a cutting stroke. So when I'm pulling back, the guys who do this for a living will tell you that's a cutting stroke into the wheel. Okay? When you come this way, just with the, the wheel, that's what they call a polish stroke. Okay? Mm, slows down the... Right. Right. And I see how black that got? Yeah. Okay. That's why I don't put much on. Pressure are you Yeah, a little bit. Enough to get it on there and let the wheel do its work. I'm not bearing in like this because if I do and I slip off, I'm breaking your blade. Right. But enough to make firm contact. I wouldn't cry too <laughs> Well, firm contact is good. Okay. And so I can see where wow. my blade's cleaning out. See why tarnish is good versus the other? Now I'm going to take your one that I told you I don't like with all the tarnish, or with the all the rust. spider rust in it, or what looks like spider rust to me, and we'll find out as soon as we get it on this. Yeah. But well, let me give that one a try and find out what happens. The spider rust one? Yeah. Okay. But you can see what I'm doing here. It's all pretty deliberate, and I've done. No, I think I need to get the camera higher. <laughs> but I, you know, I've done. I've done enough of these where, you know, I know how I want to attack which parts of the blade on the wheel so that I don't have it grab and I don't have it jerk it out of my hand. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you can see other than just right you can see other than just right in between here right. where there's a little bit of junk and that looks pretty much like soap and gunk. So I'm going to try to get that out with a fiberglass pencil, okay, okay. And uh, which is a nice little eraser. See the same in here? And that'll, that'll enable me not to have to pop these pins off. Right. And so what my real aim is because of the age and the value of this one is to make it presentable. Okay, and that, at the end of the day, if we can make this as presentable as possible, now you can always pop these off and put new ones on, but then you're going to have to pop them both off and match Right. Them. Okay. These actually are not a bad set of pins. These are probably originals on this old yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. But you'll see, because all we've done is just the green matchless. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. So this is same oh. grid as chromium oxide? Uh, maybe a little less than the 0.5. Wow. 
maybe not quite as aggressive as that. Or right now, around. Is this typically where you start out? I do, unless, well, just to give you an idea, I usually will start wow. here anyway, because just once, to see what happens. Right. Once I put, if I start off on this particular green, okay, then I know what I'm going to be looking at. So if I need to go greaseless from here, I can see, you know, am I going to have to go 80 grit? Can I do 400 grit? You know, can I do 600 grit? <clears throat> so, you know, by, by taking the, the initial gunk off the top, that gives me a pretty fair idea of, of where I'm going to start. And the other thing is, a lot of times if it's just a deep tarnish like this one was when we started, you can actually get a pretty nice finish off of this thing right. without having to go more aggressive. So just like I tell you with honing, the, the less aggressive is always better. Less is always better. Yeah. You know, you don't so want to you sit don't have there. to take it back up the grit level as right. Right. if you don't have to. If you don't have to. Right. And I would always rather, you know, if something, you know, rather when people say I'm going to do 20 or 50 or 100 strokes, if I can find a way to do five strokes or 10 strokes and make that process repeatable, then that's what I try to do. And so then that way, if that technique it, it will work and less, but I can repeat it all the time, where I don't have to do, is it 50 this time, is it 100 next mm -hmm. time, is it whatever, if I can take that guesswork out of it, that's what I try to do. So I, I really try to do the same stuff with this. Okay, so we're getting a fair shine out of this. And so, no, give it, give it a little pressure. You want to see it cake on there. Just hold it on for one 1,000, one 1,000. There you go. That's it. That's all you need. See the green on there now? Okay. I keep seeing that black in the middle of it. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but if the majority of the wheel has got the green on it, you're good. Okay. Now, you see how I'm working wow. long ways most of the way? Right. Now, sometimes the one area that gets missed the most is right up here by the shoulder. So sometimes you can just bear in a little bit by that shoulder and get that. And I'll, I do... Now, would that be a good point to go perpendicular to the wheel? And well... When I do this for a little while, normally what I'll try to do is then I'll come back just and just for a couple of seconds and then I'll do the horizontal strokes. Yeah. But I try to make I try to make as much use out of the, the, the linear strokes, the longer strokes, um, that I can because that doesn't tear up the edge as much. Yeah, it seems like that should be more efficient, but it also the horizontal seems like strokes. it would take a, also smooth well, out the edge a little Fill the blade. Wow. Fill, fill how it's starting to warm up a little. Yeah. That's not bad. That's warm? Well, no, no, that's just warm. <laughs> they, some, that's the point where I'd be tossing it in some water. <laughs> well, no, they get they get hot, hot after this. This is not bad. Okay, when it when it gets hot, hot, where you can't touch it, you do toss it in the water, <coughs> and that's why I don't like the fast ones. <coughs> the fast ones as much. Mm -hmm. So, now uh, here's the here's the horizontal yeah, stroke. Have, yeah, it gets a lot of time in there before it's getting really hot. Okay. And so the main thing is you just want to keep it flat. And I'll, if anything, on here, I'll angle more towards the edge so that it doesn't grab the spine. Right. Okay, now see what we're starting to wow. get? Wow. Let's say it grab me, man. <laughs> so then we take the razor. Now some of them are nice and simple like this when you yeah. just have tarnish on. Okay? And we'll right. hone this one before you leave. Just so you'll have it and you can actually test shave it before you leave. Amazing how well that cleaned up. Oh, you ain't seen nothing. All right. So now, what do you think, man? Is that better than what it was? Yeah. <coughs> Worth the price of admission, Kyle? Phenomenal. <laughs> All right, so we did the green to get you started here, right, Bob? Right. All right, so that cleaned up pretty well. So now all I want to do is I want to dress this up and make it really pretty. So now I'm going to go. I will use a rouge on this one just to show you. Okay. So I'm just using the white. It's always going to have a little black in it. Okay. Now. The nice thing about this, with horn handles and stuff like that, and, and some of the acrylics. Now, is this I, one an acrylic or This is probably a uh, cellulite. Okay. Or at best a bake, bake light, but I'm thinking cellulite. Uh, and you'll be able to tell because it'll smell like rubber, mm. burnt rubber, when I put it on here. 
So you're going to clean up both the razor and the handle with the rouge? With the, with the white. Now, horn and, and wood, I can actually clean up on here. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. It's, on the green. Yeah, it should polish up really well. I don't. <coughs> but a lot of the acrylics in that, no. Okay. So. Right, because you basically want to get to the same grit that you would if you're doing a headlight restoration. Right. right. And you see, I'm not staying on here forever. There's really not a whole lot of need. And I only want to do as much as it takes, that's all. I thought it looked good at the green. <laughs> um, you'll, uh, I mean, you could use the thing as your mirror. Yeah, you'll be freaking out here in a few seconds. <laughs> Now, I actually like doing this. I just don't have the time because I do so much honing to do as much of this as I'd like. But I, I really like the restorations. Every now and then, if yeah. somebody sends me one, I can take the time to do one for them. But it's not often. You know what I mean? Well, you're getting, what, 60 razors a day? Well, not a day. I usually do uh, between 100 and 150 a week. Okay. So, that's a lot of razors. Yeah. But, and the problem is, not so much home them. It's testing them. Because, um, I just You only have so much beard to shave. <laughs> I can test, I can test between a dozen and 14 or 15 razors tops. Because mm. um, I segment off my face. Yeah. And it's got to cut a specific way that I'm comfortable with. If it doesn't, it goes back into the rehone or touch-up batch mm. for that day. And so, there no razor leaves this joint until I'm comfortable with the way it shaves. Yeah. So typically, if somebody can't shave with it, you know, it's either a technique problem on their hand, or they might have messed an opponent, or they've done something else. Because um, I'm pretty used to shaving, and I'm I'm pretty. I'm pretty anal about that. You know, that's <laughs> everybody's got their OCD stuff. But for me, I mean, you know, there's no sense honing a razor up, sending it out. It's going to be uncomfortable for somebody. And so, you know, we all have different beers. We all have different everything else. We have different touches. We have different skill levels. But, I mean, it's, it's at least got to be comfortable, very, very comfortable for me. Let's see. The celluloid, you don't have to do much, but and some of the handles are just so old and nasty that it's hard to bring them back. Now, this is celluloid I, on this one? I'm thinking it is. But you can bring them most of the way back, smell. Okay. Some are stronger than others. But remember how ratty and dull these scales were? Yeah. Now, some come out better than this. Um, some come out worse than this. So it's just kind of the luck of the draw with how much wear and time and the kind of exposure that right. the, the particular set you have has been exposed to. So dude, what are you thinking? Well, we still got to clean out the inside a little bit. but Yeah. It's just phenomenal how well these clean up being as old as they are. Isn't that crazy? Now would you have thought that when you brought that in? That you'd have walk away with something was, like that? I was hoping. <laughs> Well, that's the, this is the one that people will take pictures of because it comes out so nice. The ones with the nasty spines like the other one you have, when people restore those, you usually don't see pictures of them because they don't come out so pretty. And you could understand that. <laughs> yeah. Now, with the lining that's on the blade here. There's no is reason. Is that to, from that's the a grind. Buff that's, from, okay. that's from the grind. And, and there's no way to get that out with Oh, that. yeah. I could I could take it to the greaseless, ah. and I can remove some steel. And then you'd have to bring it back up through all the... Right, and I could right. take it all the way to mirror, where I could count my eyebrows. But I'm not that far from counting my eyebrows right no, now. No, it's... But, you put uh, it against your fingers, and yeah, Yeah, beautiful. but those are, the, those are just the original grind marks that are in here. This wow, probably to was be able to still set. have those on there is incredible. And, and just to have it shine up like that, so... Yeah, that too. <laughs> So that's a beautiful thing, and you can always just start that's off. That's what I hope all of them end up looking like. <laughs> well, you know what, though? But that's the goal, and why not? Yeah. You know? 
<coughs> and it's just the luck of the draw on buying them. Mm. Now, for the inside of this, what I would recommend is just get make get hot water and soap I've and, got and a, a big old scrub brush. You know, like a bristle toothbrush or something. I've got like an that. ultrasonic cleaner at home. And then you're in business. Sometimes when you get these wet on the outside, like with real hot water, okay, they'll dull back out. And you always know that if you go back to the white, you can bring that back to the nice looking. Mm. Okay? So, for this one, I'd say we're done. I'll do one more step just to show you. And I'll put the rouge on this one. Um. Right behind you. And this is, uh, I like rouges sometimes. Uh, some of the white rouges and the pink put a real radiant shine on a razor. Okay? And so, um, what I like about the red is that uh, a red puts like a really deep, deep luster to it instead of that real sparkly, shiny that, that the pink does. So that's personal preference, right? There's okay. nothing wrong with the pink. There's nothing wrong so with the white. So these are the rouges, the red one? The red, the red's a rouge. So the red's actually a deeper rouge than the white, or at least a higher grit? Well, to me, well, usually your rouges don't have any grit. I mean, they're basically just polishers. Okay, right. and so now, you know, here I'm on the 1800 um, Baldor, and this is really good, but usually with ruses, so you've seen, when I'm buffing, you saw what I was using over here, I'm using sewn wheels. Right. Okay, and so those are stiffer. This is a completely unsewn wheel. Ah, okay. Okay. It's just layers of fabric, and that's the Correct. speed that keeps them nice and Keeps them, keeps them tight, yeah. and so I just touch that on there. But now here, I'll, I, I won't stay on here long, but I just like the, the, the deep shine that I get coming off the white. Now that white's not a rouge. The green and the white are both, uh, those are both polishers, okay? And so then when I go to this rouge, I mean, those are both buff, you know, I'm doing a, an actual buff. Here, I'm just doing nothing but polishing. Right. Now, not that, not that the green and the white aren't polishing. It's just a whole different animal. What do you think of that, man? You live with that? It's just phenomenal. We'll hone that one up, and uh, and we'll be able to use that. But here's that little pen I told you about. Actually, I have to order some more. But that's uh, <clears throat> that's these guys. Little spot sanding pens. And um, you just oh, nifty. You just screw a little fiberglass in there, and then get you enough length to get that gunk out of there. Now this stuff will itch the shit out of your fingers. So mm, try not to get so it on. So wear gloves. Either that, or you see how I'm being real careful not to get any on. Yeah. And blowing it off. But so see how it's getting. Gloves in a good vacuum. Yeah. And so you can get a, a lot of that off, and then the rest you can get with your ultrasonic or whatever. Yeah. But it's still better than what it was. And that's really all I'm looking for is just to knock that crap off here. Because I haven't taken it apart. Okay? If I took it apart, I just throw it on a damn buffer and be done in two seconds. Exactly. We'll do that with one of the ones that you were saying we repen. Yeah, that that other one. Yeah. But see how much nicer that is and what it was? Wow. And then in, in on this side too. Yeah. And so, for inside, it doesn't have to be perfect like that. These things are awesome. I forget who it was. Order that, one of those. That, uh, Gotta love eBay and Amazon. They've got everything that oh. you can ever need. Yeah, no doubt so about it. So, you like the SR Fordham more than the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Is there uh, a particular reason, or I can just... I can control the speed. Ooh. Nice. Makes sense? Yeah. So uh, a lot easier, a lot you can pulse it if you need to, basically. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Now what I would tell you though is that see a lot of people clean out in between here uh, with the wire. <laughs> do not do that with celluloid or bake light or plastic. Because yeah. you just burn up the insides. Yeah. 
Now you can do that with wood and you can do it with horn and get away because the wire <clears> is not going to melt or tear this stuff up. It will tear this stuff up. It would sand the wood though, wouldn't it? In the huh? horn. It would end up sanding the wood and horn though, wouldn't it? Not too bad. Okay. Not really too bad. Because it more it'll more wedge itself in. But here, because this is so soft and pliable, yeah. it'll just burn out big chunks. And I mean big chunks is ugly, you wasted a set of of good scales. And like I said, dude, you know, this is why I try to save that <laughs> this is why but i try to save the vintage scales that come with the razor because you know when you can preserve them like this you know and even if i need to you this know even if incredible. i need to hear the metal on the other side yeah that's important so now you're not that using solid? a peening hammer here i'm using a half round uh, and the reason i like that better than just a straight ball peen is that, that one <laughs> well the impact on this is very precise yeah Okay, and so by having a half the dome, okay, it widens, you know, the impact area. Okay. Okay, and so I'm not as apt if I miss to, to just, yeah, to, get, to totally bust the whole thing up. As long as I can hear metal on metal and I hear solid here, see how light I'm tapping? Same amount it on doesn't there, so. sound light. That's How much pressure would you say you're using early? Minimal. Minimal on that. But feel a the pound, difference. Pound, a half pound? Um, minimal. <laughs> Here, feel the difference. Yeah, that's wow. Okay, and now it's not too tight, it's not too loose, it's centered. We did the same amount, or fairly close to the same amount. All right, so this one I was lucky, it came out okay. All right. So we got a half hour invested in this blade. Right. So and far and not including so the far, honing. So far, not including the honing. And and we lucked out because it was just some tarnish. Okay. Yeah. I haven't had to take it to the green greaseless and stuff like that. So the greaseless seriously could take, you know, you could have two, three, four, or five hours. On um, a buffer with not, grease. Not just on that, but in the process. Wow. Okay. So I'm gonna do a real light, you know, at a real light touch. On depending how many grits I have to work through in the greaseless. Right. I mean, it could maybe it could take two hours, you know, but for the entire process. So I have to work through the greaseless. Once I'm done with the greaseless, then I have to come back and I have to hand sand to where, you know, and usually, usually for me, I'll go back and I'll hand sand from 220 or 320 all the way up to 1200 or 1500. Then I go back to the buffers, okay. And, and so I'm on buffers of, you know, before the ones that we started with. And when I do that, then I'm going to start off on the emery or a gray. Then I'm going to go to the high strength green. Then I'm going to go to the green that we started with here. Okay. So, you know, we were pretty lucky. This thing just had some tarnish on it. The handle was pretty easy to clean up. All we got to do is clean the inside of the handle and haunt it. Yeah. So it's still, still, we got a half hour in it. Okay. And so, but, you know. I try to do stuff like this when I get razors in for people. I just try to do this when I'm honing them. I'll just take, come in here five seconds and throw it on the buffer and see if I can't make it look better for them. Why not? Yeah. You know? Right. Now, if I got a freaking rust bucket, <laughs> it ain't <laughs> happening. It ain't happening. So there, there's one so you can see.